Good afternoon and welcome to the latest edition of the Cult Classic Movie Series. Uh, this week we're going back into the vault, roughly nearly 20 years for the first movie and in 19 for the second. We're talking all about ancient Egypt this week and no better way to talk about ancient Egypt than the, the, the holy mother of a blockbuster movie that came out of ancient Egypt. It was The Mummy and uh, obviously it took, uh, such was a fantastic success that the minute the movie was over, they had an ink on for a sequel, and that was The, the Mummy Returns. And one of the main stars of The Mummy and The Mummy Returns joins us this evening, uh, the one and only Patricia Vas Velasquez, who played the role of An Anuxa Namon, uh, and Mila Nias, Anuxa Namon in the first movie, and Mila Nias and Anuxa Namon in the second movie. Um, Patricia, in terms of signing on for The Mummy. Um, first of all, how did that start to come about? And was it, was it a great excitement in terms of, were you always intrigued or stoked by ancient Egypt? And obviously this hadn't really been a, a blockbuster Egyptian movie in a long time. Well, thank you so much for, for inviting me to talk and you know, chat about, wow, something that really, uh, in a way, started my career uh, many, many years ago. I, it's it really, I learned so much about uh, coming into the project of The Mummy because it really tells you that it doesn't matter who you meet, you should always be kind to people. And you never know what can happen. And sometimes a boss is important, an assistant is just as important. So that goes for you, you know, if you're watching this or you're listening, please take my advice. Um, I was invited to do a general meeting with the casting director at Universal. I came to LA at that point, I was living in New York and nothing. I went to a friendly meeting with this woman. We really got along, talked about important things. And next thing, day after I hear that I've been booked to, you know, I've been offered this role to go and work in this movie called The Mummy. I had no idea, Jane, that it was a big film, nothing. Uh, then I, then everyone was very excited. I was almost very innocent about it. Um, and then I went to London. Uh, we shot there at Shepperton Studios. And, and when I got there, that's when I, I realized, oh my God, this is a pretty big film. I actually got to London. I, I didn't, you know, it wasn't until I walked into set uh, that I realized that this was a, a big film. They, they and then I've always been fascinated by Egypt. I mean, I'm indigenous myself, South American, Latin American indigenous people, you know, from the Wayu community. Uh, so anything that has to do with culture, with traditions, with uh, uh, le ancient learning that has been passed down from generation to generation, it's something that has been a very uh, uh, intriguing to me and important to me in my life. Because I think the fact that we travel so much when we were little, it gave me a sense of belonging somewhere and not being an outsider. And I suppose, Patricia, you mentioned that in terms of not knowing the size of the project. And uh, obviously, as we said, most the movie was, was shot in London. But it's a bit of a surprise being in Los Angeles and being told you're going to shoot a movie in part of London. And were you aware of the fellow cast members or was it the case, as you said, just arriving on set and seeing, oh, there's Brendan Fraser, uh, there's... Uh, John Hanna, there's um, older for uh, in terms of those. Had you any inkling of who was uh, going to be on the movie? Yeah, I knew who Brendan Fraser was, and obviously I knew at that point that he was involved in the film. But you know, Hollywood is a very big industry, so uh, you, you really don't have the um, you, you can't picture in your mind. It was also very new. Everything was too new for us. It's not like we had internet or, uh, I mean, we did, we had internet, but, but what I'm saying is that we, don't, we didn't have the uh, ex expanded information as we do nowadays. Um, so yeah, I knew that Brendan was involved and I, it, it, it almost was gradually, but the shock of you know, being there and seeing John Hanna which I knew who I knew who he was, even Rachel, uh, but nothing hits you until you're on set. And then at that point, you, you think you, you also have to be very careful because you can't, you, you can uh, think of it as there are only people, you know, they are only people and we're there to do the work. And the only thing you can really, really do is be grateful 
and do the work the best you can. So you can, you know, try to shine and, and contribute somehow, whether it's a small project or a big project, do the best you can. And I suppose, uh, Patricia, in terms of uh, the iconic uh, opening scene, in terms of you uh, sort of uh, walking out uh, in terms of that sort of costume as well, I suppose when doing my research, I heard it took four hours in terms of body paint. Uh, four? In- no, it wasn't four. It was 13. <laughs> it was crazy. Oh my God. Yeah, the first time we did the actual body paint, it took 13 hours. They designed a special chair for me to sit on, and I had four people painting on me. Uh, four people, you know, to the front, two in the back. And then I will use this chair uh, because I had to leave this painting on my body for uh, quite a few days. They just left a little bit of an opening in the back of my back. So, you know, you would not get uh, poisoned from the paint. Um, And every day you will retouch. And then the retouch went anywhere between two and four hours, but that was daily. Uh, and I will go home and I was, well, uh, we're at the hotel we were staying. And then uh, I think I, re- I remember maybe we stayed in Richmond uh, the first few days. Um, and, we'll, you know, they will paint again. And it, it really, it was, it was really actually funny going out at night for dinner. The few times that I was able to go because people will look at you thinking that these tattoos were real. <laughs> it was, it was, it was really like people looked at you very, very differently. And I suppose, uh, Patricia, in terms of uh, the mummy, in terms of, uh, we'll speak a a bit about the the first one, in terms of the sex, uh, in terms of its realism, uh, obviously a good lot was uh, shot in, as you mentioned, the UK, a bit was shot in Morocco as well. And uh, what was that like uh, shooting in Morocco in terms of the heat and the sort of humidity? Were you long there in terms of shooting those sort of scenes? I suppose in terms of Egypt itself, I suppose it's so rich in this sort of a culture that it probably wouldn't like uh, people out or desecrating what they see as holy sort of sites. So in terms of having to reinvent those sort of sites in Morocco, was that sort of a challenge as well? Well, um... The, the experience for shooting The Mummy Returns really was truly wonderful because it was the same crew. And so it was a big reunion when we all arrived to London and we, no, when we all arrived to Morocco and because that was the first place where we shot and we were there for quite a long time. Uh, we shot in Erfurt uh, in the South um, and that was the first time that anybody was shooting there. So it, it really, was wonderful for their economy, you know, all these people coming to bring a, a movie set there. And then we moved a lot. We moved around a lot. We went to Warzazad. Uh, uh, we stayed in different places, but um, shooting in Morocco was extraordinary. It was really, I mean, being in the desert, the crew worked so hard. We had such a wonderful time, but we had some challenges. <laughs> you know, we had, I remember we had a few sandstorms and it's not when you are shooting in the middle of the desert not i'm not talking about if you're in Warsaw that that it's more of a town or you're in marrakesh when you're in airfoot at that time many many years ago it wasn't as populated as it is right now uh we had a couple of sandstorms and i remember being on the trailer super scared because this wind was just blowing like crazy and the sand, you could not go out. So it was, uh, uh, everybody worked really, really hard, but it was, you know, I felt like even though we were a lot of people, the crew was very, very tight. It was, uh, um, there was a camaraderie among the crew and the actors. By the time we got to London, um, it was a breeze. <laughs> it was, we were so comfortable and uh, uh, just really, was a one of a kind experience. I feel like I was the chosen one in a way. And that's one of the reasons why I want to give back so much. And I suppose, uh, Patricia, in terms of working with Arnold uh, Voloso, who played uh, Emotive, uh, that sort of uh, connection and the sort of chemistry that she has uh, in terms of that. There's one scene as sort of in particular, I suppose, it's uh, in terms of when Emotive is the sort of the mummy himself. And uh, he sort of hypnotizes you, and uh, it all sort of brings you back towards ancient Egypt and sort of romance. But the viewer actually sees you actually making out with what was a sort of a mummy sort of head. In, in, terms, of that, in terms of shooting that, what was what was that like? Were you was it just 
putting uh, your lips to a mannequin or something like that. <laughs> that was that's so funny. Um, if you only knew, so we had, you know, every time you shoot something that had to be with the green screen or where you know there's going to be some sort of a special effect, you kind of did it with the person first. So, um, so we did a, a little bit, but really the main takes were with a green apple. Yeah. So I kiss a green apple. That's okay. all. <laughs> So it's it's not a, a mummy mannequin at all. It's a, a, an apple that was uh, that. Yeah, but you had to but you had to practice. I mean, we had to do it with Arnold. It was amazing. I mean, I love working with him. Um, so we we had to kind of do something first, and then because you have to kind of see what the dimensions are. So if you're holding someone, and you you have to you have, it has to match once they do it in the computer. So. Um, but yeah, I had to kiss an apple. That the main kiss, the main thing was an apple. Nothing in there, just the apple. <laughs> and of course, Patricia, in terms of some of the other sort of, uh, well, first of all, before I mention that, something that struck me in terms of uh, doing my research from the mummy and the mummy was returned to us. In terms of the set, uh, you had some fairly scary moments as well. John Hannah sprained his wrist. Uh, Brendan Fraser nearly got hanged, nearly got choked. Apparently, that was for real in the sort of first movie and near escape. So, so it's, a, it's a case of working in terms of all the action scenes where people had some nasty bumps and bruises as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I hurt myself with the sigh. I could have had a big cut here when we were training. Uh, because, I mean, if you look at the, the mummy, originally in, in the script, Rachel and I were not supposed to do so much of the fight. We were, that's why we originally, that's why they designed the masks because it was mostly going to be done by the stunts. But Rachel and I really, really got into it. We trained, I think it was about two months for hours a day. And this became a thing for us. Um, that's why we take the mask off because we did a lot of our stunts, uh, but we also got hurt um a lot <laughs> during the film all of us but you know that's what happens when you are uh in love and excited being given the opportunity to do your work uh your creative work i mean what a blessing you don't mind you get hurt you get over it and then you um i actually tell you something that has never come out i had surgery uh while we shot the mummy and we had to stop production for a little bit um so i had an emergency surgery um, and and then you know they went back and then I was out for like two weeks and they kept shooting. Um, I don't know if they stopped production fully. I think they moved it. They, it was only in maybe a couple of days. I can't remember. It was so long ago. But they moved things around, and then I just rested for almost two weeks. I remember that I had surgery at a hospital in London called the Portland Hospital. That was a pretty chic. <laughs> it was pretty chic being at this hospital, um, but it was a little scary. But I could not wait to get better to get back to work, and that is heaven to be able to do what you love with such a creative people and so much support. I mean, that's why I, I tell my daughter all the time, you know, whatever you do, just really do it. Just be the best at what you can in what you love to do don't settle for anything just because it's going to pay your bills or because, you know, don't become a slave of the economy or of your life. Just go live your life freely and do the best you can um, in, 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 in the things that you love doing. And I suppose, uh, Patricia, another sort of scene I just wanted to start to touch on there is when you're doing the big for a motive and the, the scarab uh, beetles start to come out and they start to... <laughs> in terms of you can see him going underneath the sort of flesh and sort of skin. In terms of uh, those sort of beetles, were they just sort of uh, sort of uh, remote sort of control sort of things and uh, just enhanced versions of, um, in terms of what did that, that actually play out in terms, of set, in terms of the set itself? Jim, I don't remember very well if there were any plastic fiddles at all. I know that everything was done um, with this, you know, computerized. I don't think there were any bees at all. I, I, you know, I might be wrong in my memory. It's not so good. Um, 
but I think there weren't any bees at all. I think I had, we had to fake the whole thing. Uh, that I, I I think that's that was the case. I might be wrong, but I, I, what I remember is that when I actually saw the film, I could not believe this animals all over the place. Uh, but I don't re I don't recall being any bills there at all. So uh, in, in terms of uh, Patricia, your own uh, character in the movie, Anoxa Nomon, um, obviously the sort of Pharaoh's daughter and uh, in terms of her sister was uh, sort of Nefertiti uh, thing. She was, uh, dare I say, she was a nasty piece of work uh, in terms of uh, as, a, uh, as a person, as a human being. And probably in terms of that, she was probably even more, dare I say, as evil than emotive in terms of... Uh, she was probably more senator. She had him loved. Uh, he was like a love, love sick sort of puppy for her, and he'd do anything for her. And um, in terms of that, really, he she really wore the trousers in that relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I I always think, uh, Jim, that playing um, bad roles are much more fun. In actors, we tend to say this, but. You know, there's one thing that we learn as we do the work is to not judge your characters because the minute you judge your characters, the work doesn't go the right way. Um, I don't think of her as someone who was evil or bad at all. I just think of Aung San Moon and Mila as someone, as a, as a soul that was really truly just fighting for her love and on the way of filing fighting for her love, she made the wrong choices. And the, you know, whatever role she took to get there, it wasn't, you know, they weren't the right choices, but those were her choices. So I try not to judge it. Um, and unfortunately at the end, her character maybe just wasn't strong enough and she betrays him, but you never know how humans react to things when they are scared. And she had already thought about it the wrong way. So it will make sense that she will make the wrong choice at the end as well. Yeah, and uh, Patricia, in terms of uh, the sort of interaction between yourself and Rachel Weisz, uh, obviously the sort of fight scenes in terms of that, had, you, had both of you a bit of background in terms of uh, uh, fight choreography uh, before you arrived on the set of uh, Mummy? And, how long was it like? Because obviously those fight scenes you have to shoot from sort of different sort of camera angles. Every sort of angle has to be sort of taken in, and uh, especially some of them are fairly sort of intense as well. Like so, uh, what was that like in terms of having to shoot those scenes? You know, Jim, when I think of of the Mummy Returns, I always think of Rachel and how wonderful she is and the great friendship that it developed. Uh, how, how wonderful she was to work with. And I always think of the fight scene um, because we trained for about two months before the, the film started and we got in shape. That's what I'm saying that before we didn't have, you know, it was written that we had these masks on, but we got so into it uh, creatively and physically and competing against each other in a very healthy way. Um, that that's why the, I believe that that's why the fight is what it is. Um, the way we rehearsed, we had amazing stunt, uh, you know, and amazing teachers that trained us. Uh, we, we did it as a choreography. And I remember that we even chose a piece of song that we rehearsed to. This fight uh, was shot for quite a few days and it was, it, it almost felt like the performance that the opening, it all, it felt like a performance that audience was gonna come into this massive set, gorgeous set, and there were gonna be an audience. That's how we felt when we shot it. Um, so the director, Stephen Summers was so uh, uh, supportive of the, pro of the process that once we were prepared, um, I have a background of a dancer, I danced my whole life. So uh, it, that's why I thought it would be good to do it to music. So we chose this piece of music that I can't remember. I, I know their song, but I can't remember the name. And sometimes I look for it on the internet and I can't find it because <laughs> I don't remember what song it was, uh, what, uh, but I remember the, the sound. Um, and, and so how it works is that we, you know, we'll be on set and 
they will play the music and then they will record to the music. And that was done so many times, so, so, so many times. And then after, um, obviously they needed sound bites. So quite a few times we had to do it without the music. And I mean, when you look at it, it, it really feels like a performance. Um, I love shooting this fight scene. Uh, I suppose, Patricia, just in terms of the movie, I can't finish off the interview but without saying uh, this person. Obviously, the mummy, uh, those uh, additions to the cast and uh, the mummy returns. But one of the stars that really sort of blew me away in terms of the mummy uh, returns was that the O'Connell's uh, young boy, um, Alex, played by <laughs> Oat. Uh, absolutely sensational uh, yeah. performance uh, throughout the sort of movie. And one thing that struck me was doing the research about him that he was so in depth in terms of the knowledge. Apparently, the mummy, the original, was one of his favorite movies that he practically knew every single line, every sort of bit, scenes, everything. That he was an actual expert. That many of the cast people would actually go to him in terms of actually, in terms of remembering stuff. That he was so professional in tune for a guy so young, and he really, really sort of. Uh, being beside uh, Rachel Weiss and um, Brendan Fraser, uh, he always sort of reveled in the sort of world. He always sort of shone him, in fact. Yeah, he was fantastic. Really, really uh, working with him. For me, it, I think it, this was the first time that I worked with, uh, with a kid. Um, and I, I didn't know the ins and, and outs of, work, of working with kids on set. Uh, and how they are being really so well taken care of. I, I do have to say his mom was with him at all times and they really took such a good care of him. He was a hard worker, that kid. He really did so, so well. Um, and I didn't have that many scenes with him, but when I work with him, I remember the scene on the train where I said, if you wish to see her again, uh, something, something. Uh, I got poisonous snakes into your bed. And so if you wish to see her again, you better behave. I remember that, that phrase. I remember a couple, like maybe three or four phrases of that film. Um, and he was so good. And when you work with such a talented person, or such a talented kid, it's very easy on your side to, you know, create all the emotions that you're supposed to create and all the objectives of, of each scene. And he made it a breeze. Like I, I, everything about him was exactly what needed to be. And I suppose, uh, Patricia, lastly, before I let you go, we had the mummy, uh, we had the sort of mummy uh, returns, and then the sort of project veered away, it sort of went into sort of China in terms of Jet Li and uh, the sort of Dragon Empire. If there was a new sort of a launch of a sort of a new movie to re-go back and rediscover the emotive sort of story one more time, and an opportunity came about for you to resurrect uh, your character, Anuxa Ramon, uh, one, one more time. Would it be something, if the writing was good and the script was good, would it be something that you'd jump past even to this day and maybe 20 years later? Sure. If it, if it was, if, if the script makes sense and if the script made sense and, and, the, and the people involved were, you know, made sense, of course. Yeah, as, I think as actors, as artists, we just want to do projects that, get that you, you feel it in your gut you 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 read something and you go okay yes and sometimes it doesn't matter when something is no it doesn't matter how people or uh, around you says you just know it and that's why um yeah i would probably do it but in relation to that question i would probably i, I would like to throw it back to you uh who if you're watching this or you, you're listening to this you always know whenever you have to make a decision you know, we ask so many questions, we go here, we evaluate, but at the end of the day, you always know what to do. Uh, on that note, uh, Patricia Velasquez, an absolute pleasure talking to you today to relive your moment, relive your memories, I suppose, and iconic moments as we went back in the vault this week, talking all things uh, ancient Egypt, uh, the classic movies. Back in 1999, you're first uh, partaking in the mummy sort of adventure playing Anuxa Ramon at uh, Namol, and then in 2001 in The Mummy Return, playing Mila Nias. Uh, Patricia Velasquez, a pleasure talking to you uh, this evening. No doubt a busy, busy 21 for you, and uh, we wish you all the best in your future endeavors. And please God, we may talk sometime again in the near future. Thank you so much. Same, same for you, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to chat.
Cheers. Thank you, Patricia. Take care. Bye-bye. Many men have wasted their lives in the foolish pursuit of Hamanapcha. Most have never returned. <laughs>